Hello. Hello, everyone. Are you there? Can you hear me? There's so much chatting going on. Uh, what are you guys talking about? Your, your, you, oh, you got your patterns. Oh, yay. Yay, yay, yay. Um, hello. Hi. Um, so, yay. Yeah, so great news, everyone. We, uh, no sound. Um, is that, am I getting confirmation that there's no sound? Um, hi. You can see me and hear me. Okay, great. So, yeah, sometimes some people can't hear me, but it might be your sound rather than mine. All right, great. So, hi, everyone. Hi, Malisha. Um, great, 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 great. Okay, so welcome to Thursday. <laughs> it's good to see you all, too. Is today really Thursday? It is. It is. Definitely is. You like my turban? Um. So you're loving the wrapped hair look? Thank you. Oh yeah, you don't recognize this dress? You like how I can just pull things out of my closet that you guys have never seen before? This is actually one of um, the dresses I probably wear the most, like just in my day-to-day -day life, because it's so easy, like wash and wear. It's um, the bodice from the Ultimate Dress Book, which was my, what, fourth book? So it has this like high jewel neck and just a basic darted bodice. And I did this like narrow shoulder adjustment. And I wrote about how to do this adjustment on my old blog, Gertie's new blog for better sewing. Basically, I mean, it's it's easy. Like this was has a full wide shoulder, the pattern. So you just kind of like scoop some out here so that the shoulder is like two and a half inches wide. I mean, you kind of want to try it on with the bra that you plan to wear. I, as usual, am wearing a Merry Widow with this, so I don't have to worry about straps showing here. So yeah, um, and yeah, this is my new hair thing that I like doing when I'm too lazy to curl my hair. So I'm glad you guys like it. I've been doing this funny thing. I should do a little tutorial of it someday because the way I've been like doing my hair under the scarf is so funny, and I don't know why I thought to do this, but I just like took both sides and like wrap them up into like a little kind of ball on the top of my head. So it like, it forms the shape of the scarf. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing guys, but it works. Um, so let's see. So it's not warmer. I don't think it's warmer today, but for some reason I'm warmer today. Um, and also, okay. So the other thing I wanted to say about this dress is that the skirt is just a gathered skirt. Like, I think it's just a rectangle. Yeah, I didn't even put side seams in it. So no pockets on this one, sadly. But um, I made this in London when I taught there the first time. So that must be, what, like three years ago? And um, this was one of my fabrics. I think it was for Spotlight. They did this black cherry print, which I have always really loved. So you guys want to do a tutorial? Okay, we can do that. Um, let's see. There's not a ton of difference between this bodice and the night and day in the median cup sizes, but Ultimate Dress Book, all my books don't have cup sizes and charm patterns do. So that's the major difference. But um, this fit is probably comparable to the charm patterns night and day in a D cup. So, or a C cup maybe. C cup. Yeah, C cup. So, so yeah. Um, let's see. You're having a hard time finding silk chiffon? That's funny. I feel like that's an easy fabric to find for the most part. And actually, just buy a scarf. I just buy these like um, silk square scarves and then fold it into a triangle. So you, you don't even have to make it yourself. And um, yeah, I buy them vintage. You don't have to buy a new one for the most part. All right, so how are we all doing? <laughs> you guys are um, 
<laughs> Belinda is chiming in on pink versus purple. So if you didn't make it yesterday, we did um, on Patreon, we did a crowd cast where I talked about the background on that embellished skirt project that we did for Patreon and sort of like the inspiration for it. Guys, I put together a PowerPoint presentation, OMG, and presented it on Crowdcast and it was really fun. And um, I just showed, I showed pictures of the inspiration images. I showed pictures that I had taken like while working on the skirts in the studio. I took picture, I showed pictures that I took when I was like scouting locations for the shoot, inspiration images for the shoot and that kind of thing. And it was really fun. And um, people really seemed to respond well to it. So I will definitely be doing more Patreon live streams like that in the future. And also the great thing about, well, one of the great things about Crowdcast is that we can do polls and you can see, it's like watching a horse race. You can see the two, polls or you know the various responses like go up and down in real time so that's always very exciting so the poll we did at the end of the crowdcast yesterday was pink or purple and purple won um i'm a little resentful because i'm a pink girl but i also love purple and purple didn't win by that much to be honest it was 55 percent for purple so and you see people now saying um you know, they would have chosen pink. So, I mean, maybe we need a, 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 a recount. <laughs> we actually should do it on the next one and see if it, we get a different answer. Don't hate. <laughs> I don't. I don't. See, look, I'm wearing purple today. <laughs> More pink for me. That's right. Too late. I'm going to do it again. We'll just see. We'll just see. So, yeah, if you're... um. Pink was polling higher when you went and watched the replay. Hmm, how interesting. How interesting. Um, anyway, these are the kind of hard hitting questions we are discussing on Patreon. So, and on the Crowdcast Lives. So if you're not on there, you're missing out on this. So replay doesn't count. <laughs> oh, we have a vote for orange. I'm a big fan of orange too, personally. So I just bought some really cute orange striped Ponty, so I'll have to show that to you guys sometime. All right, everyone. Um, let's see. I have two show and tell items for you before we get into our topic for the day, which is sergers. What is my Patreon? So Patreon is a subscription service that you can join on patreon.com. And if you just search Gertie on Patreon, you will find me. And we do exclusive content there and exclusive projects. Speaking of which, tomorrow is a Patreon release. And one of the things that I am just like so excited to share with you. So do check my social media in the morning. Um, if you're on Patreon, don't forget to check Patreon in the morning. And um, yeah, the post will be up. There'll be a video and a downloadable expansion pattern with instructions for you to download tomorrow morning. And yeah, it's very exciting. So I cannot wait to show it to you. Uh, let's see. So the other thing that's really exciting is that today we released the PDFs of Stanwick and Hepburn. So if you're on Patreon and you're a Patreon princess, you would have received them, if you're a PDF princess, you would have received the PDFs in your messages on Patreon. So make sure to check that if you feel like you should have gotten it and you haven't. And then they were also released to all the pre-order people by email. So do check your email. Let us know if you didn't get it. Um, our emails do sometimes go to spam for people. So check your spam first. And um, yeah. People are saying I've already sent them off for printing. Yeah, so we're super excited. And um, Malisha is waiting, currently waiting on the delivery of the printed copies of the Stanwick skirt, all 666 pounds of it. And then Hepburn will be following soon after. So just hang, hang in there, hang tight. If you're a printed copy person and we'll be getting those to you as soon as we can. 
as soon as we can, but just be very patient with this whole process because everything's moving a little slower than usual. I love you guys too. Oh, you guys love Malisha. You're not even talking to me. Um, when will the princess level be unlocked again? Probably sometime next week, I would guess. I'm still kind of undecided on if it's going to remain open or if I'm just going to do it, do like a, a limited time where you can get in on the princess. So <laughs> much love and patience for Malisha. Yeah, so I will keep you updated on the princess level and the reopening of it. Yeah, the whole world really is slowed down right now. Uh, okay, so. What do we have to talk about now? <laughs> Marin, are you trying to bribe Moesha? <laughs> Marin says, I'm super patient, but you should send mine first. <laughs> so, okay. That's all the updates on Charm and Patreon and all of that. Um, let's see. <laughs> So let's see, I have two little um, show and tell kind of things for you. I do want to share this fabric with you that I got from B&J and I'm cutting something out of it today. How fun is this? I'm thinking of this as like my Golden Girls, like Lanai fabric. Um, look at that. Look at that, like little monstera and palm leaves. This is from B&J. It's a rayon chalet. It's so fun. It's so drapey. Yeah, so this is like great for wearing on the lanai. I am cutting out a new project out of this. It's the one I've kind of been hinting at that's going to come to you guys um, sometime next month, May, which is tomorrow. So it's not Liberty. It's uh, just a rayon chalet from B&J Fabrics. So um, yeah, it just feels really nice. And um, I feel like you can't even really see the colors here, but it's like bright, bright greens and orange bird of paradise and pink hibiscus. And it's just really pretty. So I've been working on that. Um, OK, someone just said that the two higher tiers are sold out. They're not technically sold out. They're just closed to new people right now because we just did a pre-order and you need to be in those tiers before a pre-order starts, you can't join it during a pre-order. So they're closed for the moment, but the upper tiers will, will open up again, probably next week. Captain life. <laughs> All right. So the other thing I want to show you is a knitting update. Oh my gosh, you guys, you are not going to believe how much I've done. Look at all these stripes. Look, I've just been watching New Girl at night and knitting. And so what we have here, these are all held stitches. This is the upper back. And so I had to knit the stripes down to where it joins the armhole, uh, the underarm. And then I had to hold these stitches and pick them up, pick up stitches on the shoulder here. And now I'm starting the front. So this is kind of like, eh, this is the front. So then I'll do a pink stripe here and start shaping the neckline. So yeah, ooh, I'm so excited about this. Um, yeah, so I'm doing good, right? I'm pretty impressed with myself. I brag about it like every chance I get. But yeah, <laughs> clearly I don't have a toddler hanging around, no. Thank the powers that be. There are no children <laughs> in my life. Um, yeah, so it's looking really good. And this this uh, yarn knits up really quickly. So I've just been enjoying this a lot. All right, everyone. So that's my knitting update. <laughs> um, and then let's see. Oh, if you want my Animal Crossing update, I've still been like, going at pocket camp really hard. And we talked here about my decision to spend 300,000 bells on a picnic set for my little animals. And I finally got the picnic set because it took two days for them to craft it. And I placed it on my campsite last night and I put a picture of it on my Instagram stories. <laughs> oh my gosh, what is happening to my life? What is happening everyone? Knitting, video games, I don't know. 
these are just coping mechanisms. So yeah, you guys saw my picnic set. It's really cute. So the animals sit there and they eat donuts. And when they eat a donut, their a little heart appears over their heads because they love the donuts. So that's really cute. That's fun for me. And also, oh, one more super important Animal Crossing update is that I am getting the carousel. So that takes 72 hours for them to make. So I'm very extremely excited about this. I'm going to have a carousel on my campsite, and I believe the animals can ride it. So <sighs> that's all the excitement I can handle for one week, pretty much. Yeah, so it's all super weird. Uh, that's how you eat donuts. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, yeah, don't judge, don't judge. Um, we all need a little something in our lives. No hate, no hate, as Malisha would say, apparently. <laughs> Go <Cope> away. <laughs> all right, everyone, so those are all my super important updates. Um, let's discuss sergers. Um, someone just said, can I share my pocket camp ID again? Yeah, let's do that right now. Hang in there, everyone, <laughs> while I do this. Um, you guys got to go to my campsite and see my um, see my picnic set. I did get my switch. I've been kind of like working away. You're also on it. <laughs> um, I'm working away a little slower on the switch. I feel like it's just like a little less satisfying for me right now. So I'm just doing like a little bit every day on my island. Oh, I became eligible. I paid off all my moving fees yesterday and I'm eligible for a house now. So I'm getting a house with a pink roof and that's all I really know. Um, so let's see. How do I share social? Um. Hold on, guys. I'm going to search. Share my ID. OK, I'm going to say it. Will someone type it into your type it into the chat? Five, three, zero, five, five, four, zero, two, six, five, three. OK, this is my pocket camp ID. So five, three, zero, five, five, four, zero, two, six, five, three. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> you guys are the best. Gertie Pocket Camp. All right, come join me. So, yeah, thank you, guys, um, the ones who have friended me, and we've been, like, watering each other's plants and um, getting each other into the quarry. quarry. One of the words I don't know how to say. And so now there's a gardening event going on. So that's, you know, it is. I'm not super excited about it, but it is what it is. Um, okay. So hi, everyone. <laughs> hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Thursday. Should we get right through the topic now that we've discussed the important daily updates? Today's topic is sergers. So I don't have a lot to say, you know, this is cue me talking for an hour. I don't have a lot to say about this. Um, I feel like I don't have a lot to say about sergers because I really only use them to do one thing, which is finish the raw edges of your fabric. So I have two sergers. I didn't pay for either of them. I like to just be super upfront about that. This one is my favorite. Um, this is the Baby Lock Imagine. And it was not gifted to me exactly. I won it. Okay, everyone. I won this in a sewing competition um, at American Sewing Expo Passion for Fashion competition. It's sort of like a live sewing competition where you, it's kind of like a project runway style competition where you have to like make a look like on the convention floor while people are like walking around and watching you and there's a fashion show. So this was, I don't know, it was a long time ago, eight to 10 years ago. I won this baby lock. Imagine because I won third place, third place in the Passion for Fashion competition. And I 
this is like the best thing I've ever won. I, it's so amazing. I love this serger. I was also recently given a Juki machine by Juki to use on video and stuff. Um, if you missed my last live stream here on YouTube, I was talking about my Juki sewing machine. They also sent me a serger. So I love both of them. I would say the baby lock is probably my favorite, but I like, you know, they're both really good sergers. If you can spring for one that has air threading, that I be, I personally feel like that feature takes sergers from being something that are like really complicated and a pain in the butt to use to something that are like a joy and super easy to use. Just my opinion. So for a long time, Baby Lock had the patent, the exclusive rights to produce these jet air threading machines. And so what that means is usually with sergers, if you look inside a serger or an overlocker, I see some of you are saying, you know, that's the, the non-US term <laughs> for a serger. I'm American, so excuse me. But yeah, everyone else calls these overlockers. So if you look inside any other serger, you're gonna see like this crazy maze of things to thread and you have three to four, th three to five threads on a serger. So, and they usually have to be threaded in a very particular order and they're just kind of complicated to thread and that's why everyone hates them. <laughs> and you can like get around it by doing things like tying off your thread and pulling them through. Like there are little tricks to get around it, but sometimes you really just have to re-thread your machine. Like if the thread breaks up here or something like that. So. You really need to know how to use your serger um, and you need to patiently spend a lot of time with the instruction manual. So that's all to say that the great thing about this jet air threading is there's none of that. You pretty much just put the threads down through these tension slots right here. And then you there are these little ports, threading ports right here, one for the upper upper looper and one for the lower looper. And you just kind of like smush the thread in there and then press this button, it goes whoosh and the threads come up threaded through the loopers. So it's amazing. Um, I've never had a problem with this machine. I've had it for a long time. I get it serviced regularly. So just kind of going back to basics, I realized as I was talking like, what's a looper? A serger is different from a sewing machine in that it doesn't have just the two threads, the upper thread and then the bobbin, it has three, to, like I said, three to five threads. So you are always gonna have two threads that um, are for the loopers, which are these little like finger, my machine is so dirty in there, I'm so glad you guys can't see this, really needs a servicing. These little like finger looking things that form the loops on the edge of your fabric to finish it. So you have the loopers down there, and then you have needles up here, which also each need a cone of thread. So you can probably see that I have mine set up for three threads right now. And just to kind of get back to why I actually, let me just say one more thing about the Jet Air threading. So the, the Juki that I received now has Jet Air threading too. So for a long time, baby locks were the only machines that had jet air threading because of this patent issue. But Juki is now producing a jet air serger as well. And it's great. It's great. It's a little different in the way you use it, but it works the same way. It just has like these little push buttons rather than the lever or lever, as you British people like to say. I know it kills you when I say lever. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Get salty about all my comments. Um, so, like the Juki a lot, it's less expensive than the Baby Locks. I believe these run about two thousand um, dollars, and this is like the entry level. And then the the Juki, Malisha, do you remember the model number? We were just looking it up the other day. The Juki model number, it's like M O one thousand or something. I think it's more like twelve hundred dollars. So, yeah, I, I love both of the machines. I would recommend either one of them. And um, but that's not to say you have to spend that much on a serger. I would say, you know, people like that 
brother entry level serger. It's like the 1034 or something. I use I used to um, teach on one of those, and it's just it's not. It works fine if you have it up and running and threaded well. It's just a learning curve to learn the threading. So if you're willing to spend the time with it and really learn and understand how to thread those four threads, you can do it and it'll work well. Oh, the other thing about these machines that I like is that the tension never seems to be a problem. It has like auto adjusting tension. So the Baby Lock and the Juki both seem to not need any adjustments with tension, which if you know, you've used an overlocker before, you know that that's one of the big sort of hot button issues is that, you know, sometimes the loops are too big, sometimes they're too tight, and it's just like a whole thing. So I would just say, like, if you're really into sewing, and you know, you have the money to spend, I would not hesitate to recommend getting a serger with jet air threading, either the Juki or one of the baby locks. Baby locks have a lot of different levels of serger. There's so much you can do with sergers. I don't know any of it, guys. The only thing I know how to do is finish my seams with it. But there are all these different feet. You can gather. You can ruffle. You can do all sorts of stuff with sergers. And for me, it's just not really what I'm interested in. It would be fun maybe someday to learn some of the different skills. But I really just use it to get a nice professional professionally finished edge on my garments on the inside, okay? So for the most part, I like to finish my seams before I start construction. So using the serger to just shave off just the little threads on the edge, but not actually take off any of the fabric because a serger has a blade, right? That's gonna be cutting as the fabric is going through. And that's really what I use it for. I like to finish my seams, not my seams, my raw edges before I start construction if possible. And one of the things I always include in the charm patterns booklets is what edges can you finish before you start construction on a serger? Because I know a lot of people really love their sergers and people will often waste a lot of time surging around edges that you're just going to be trimming off anyway, like neckline edges on the Lamour dress. You don't need to finish that because you're just going to end up grading it and trimming off that excess anyway. So what I tell you in my instruction booklets is like you need to finish the vertical edges of the skirt. You need to finish the center back of the bodice. And it just has a list of everything that you can finish on your serger before you start construction. So that's one of my um, things that I like to do in the charm patterns booklets. So you'll see that kind of at the beginning of the sewing instructions. So let's see, the other thing I wanted to kind of come back to is differences between a sewing machine and the serger if you're totally new to it. Um, the blade, <laughs> the blade is the big thing. It's gonna cut your the edge of your fabric off and then finish the edges by looping around it, okay? So, some people will tell you that you can disengage your blade if you're not actually trimming away fabric. I prefer not to because I like to be trimming away any little threads or anything, any of those like loose threads that are kind of unraveling as I'm finishing it. And so I just kind of like aim my fabric for the very edge of the blade, trim all that stuff off, and then I got a nice, nice neat finished edge. So let's see, other things are that Unlike with a sewing machine, I used to teach like how to use a serger to very, very beginning sewers <laughs> because I taught at the studio that like would just let the students use sergers on like their first project. And um, one of the things that is like hard for people to understand about sergers versus sewing machines is that with a serger, you're going to be chaining off, right? So with a sewing machine, you never want to be sewing without fabric underneath your needle. But with a serger, you have to. So like at the end, you need to keep sewing, keep your foot on the pedal, keep chaining off so you form a few inches of chain and then trim it. And a lot of people worry about like, but what do I do with those chain ends? And I don't do anything with them because after I finish serging an edge, I'm going to go construct the garment and the raw edges and those chains are going to get seamed into a seam on the garment or turned up into the hem. And it's just not an issue. 
So I never worry about like, you know, all the little tricks that people show you, like, you know, threading the chain through and taking it back. But there are different ways to finish the serger thread if for some reason you need to, because there's no back stitch. The other thing is, um, one of the things I learned early on is that you don't really need to ever, there is a, you lift the presser foot back here, but you don't really ever need to lift it. You can just kind of like push up the toe of the presser foot up here with your hand and then kind of scoop the fabric underneath there. And then the feed dogs are just kind of, kind of pull it through. So for the most part, I keep the presser foot down all the time on the serger. Other settings that I really like are just using three threads, okay? Because I'm not using the serger to actually construct the garment and to make seams with. So there's really no need to have two needles. I'm not looking for like strength of construction in the seams. I'm The loopers are the most important part when you're finishing the edges, right? So to save, thread and hassle and all of that, I usually do a three thread wide overlock on my seams. So I only have to have one needle and one needle threaded and just three cones of thread. Other thing I like about the Baby Lock Imagine and the Baby Lock Machines is that they have a quick threading reference that tells you all the different um, settings you need to have for the various stitches you can do on a serger or like Oh, the rolled hem is another nice feature that I sometimes use. You can do a very small, narrow hem that's like wrapped in thread on a serger. And that can be nice to do on like linings and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I pretty much for the most part, keep it on this three thread wide overlock and just finish my seams with it. And the other question that I get a lot about sergers is as they pertain to knits, like especially now that we have the Hepburn top coming out, which is for knits, people ask all the time if they can, like, can I still sew this top if I don't have a serger? And the question is like, yeah, 100%, because I actually feel like it's more important, for, like, at least for me and the way I sew, it's more, imp it's more important to have a serger for woven projects because they fray <laughs> more, easily so I want to finish those seams and for things like the Hepburn top the Peter Pan Bolero all of those things that we do in um, stable knits with charm patterns you're not going to be constructing this even if you had a serger we wouldn't tell you to construct the seams with the serger because we're doing some detail stuff like you don't want to be surging around a Peter Pan collar like you want to be able to um, have a lot of control so we tell you how to sew those garments on a sewing machine using a ballpoint needle and usually a narrow zigzag. And that's all you really need. And then knits don't fray, really. So you could finish your edges on the serger. And I do talk about that in the Hepburn Top booklet, but you really don't have to because they're not going to fray. So for me, I feel like the serger is more important for projects made in a woven than projects made in a knit. But that's just my feeling. So let's see, anything else that I have left off? Um, do you need a serger? No, I 100% think that it's not something that you need to have early on in your sewing career. It's For me, it's like a dress form. These are like very expensive tools that for the kind of sewing I do, just pretty much do one thing. <laughs> and they're very convenient and very nice to have, but there are other ways you can achieve what you need to achieve. So, and I always outline other finishing methods, like in my book, for instance, all my books have finishing methods. Like you can pink your seam allowances, you can do a zigzag, you can do an overcasting stitch. So a lot of sewing machines have something called an overcast stitch and an overcast foot, which produces this little like looped edge effect like the serger. It's a million times slower and takes so much thread and is kind of annoying, but it does it. So, and then there's like French seams. There's so many, there's all these different ways that you can finish your seams. So would I want to live without a serger? No. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm at the point where, you know, if you're doing a lot of garment sewing, yeah, it's a really convenient tool to have. And um, it gives you a nice finish on the inside, but I 100% don't think it's necessary, especially if you're doing like vintage inspired sewing. So I think, I mean, 
that's kind of it for me. Like those are my feelings about sergers. Um, yeah, see a lot of people are saying been sewing over 30 years and never owned a serger. Um, you love the seams that I did in the book. Oh, Hong Kong finish. Yeah, so you can do like bound seam allowances, which look really pretty. Yeah, there are like lots of different and things that are more vintage. So if you're really into the vintage aesthetic, a serger is not going to give you that. A serger has a more modern, ready to wear look to the inside. So yeah, I mean, and also, I mean, there are people, like I said earlier, there are people out there who do so much with their sergers. So there's certainly more that this machine can do. I just don't use my serger for that purpose, for the kind of sewing that I do for myself and for charm patterns. So this is just like take all of this with a grain of salt coming from someone who sews mostly wovens, um, adult <laughs> clothing with a sort of vintage vibe to it. So there are going to be people who couldn't live without a serger, like people who sew spandex, active wear, um, you know, dance wear, swim, swimwear, all that kind of stuff, like who would tell you the complete opposite and would show you like a million amazing things you could do with a serger. So this is just from my, you know, very specific viewpoint. So let's see. Paige says. You would use a serger on a brocade versus the Hong Kong finish. I did. Yeah, I do mostly use a serger on the brocade. Um, a Hong Kong finish, I would probably use if I were doing a sort of upscale jacket that was unlined for some reason. I think that would be a really nice finish is to do Hong Kong. But if I were doing a brocade that was going to be lined anyway, that's the other thing. A lot of times you're finishing like skirt seams that are just going to be covered up with a lining. Then, yeah, like just just throw it through the serger. Uh, let's see. So yeah, dress forms will be another conversation another day. So I feel like that's kind of its own topic and I will definitely reserve a day. I have two topics coming up. One is dress forms and the other is washing fabrics and washing your handmade items because I feel like those are two things that get a lot of questions and discussion on various platforms. So those will be coming up for sure. All right, so um, let's see. You guys are kind of answering each other's questions. You guys are slaying trolls like champs. Thank you guys. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Let's see. <laughs> what are your favorite feet for the serger slash overlocker? Um, I only have one and it's the one that came on the machine. So like I said, I am not gonna be the person to um, ask about anything complicated to do on a serger. So I just use the one that it came with. Do I have any tips for surging curves? Um, practice. You know, you really have to like steer it around the curves. Just really, and I would just, you know, kind of take some scrap fabric and just sew some crazy curves. But yeah, it's all about, it's all about just guiding your fab, guiding your fabric through the serger. Do I have a cover stitch? No, I don't. Um, that's another thing that just for the type of sewing that I do, I don't, I don't see a need for. Um, for hemming knits, I will use like on the Hepburn top, we mostly just used like a turned up and um, top stitched hem, but with a narrow zigzag, and that worked really well. The other thing that I will use sometimes is the twin needle on my sewing machine, which kind of replicates the look of a cover stitch. So you can put your fabric through the serger to finish the edge if you want, press it up, and then just top stitch with the twin needle, which is a really nice effect. How does a serger compare to pinking seams? 
it's out of my price range, but just curious. I mean, they're, they both do the, they're both, they're both two techniques that you use to finish your seams, but that's kind of all they have in common. Um, pinking is just, you know, it's a pair of scissors and it just creates this little zigzag edge. The reason that pinking works is because anything that's on the bias doesn't fray. So pinking shears create these little 45 degree angles, which um, are not supposed to fray. Sometimes they will fray a little bit. So it's like what most people learn when they first start to sew because it's very easy, very low maintenance. It's also super vintage, you know, like, you know, before people had sergers at home, that's what they would use. So yeah, it's just a, a cheap, easy seam finish to prevent fraying. And then a serger is an expensive, <laughs> expensive, more polished looking seam finish. Okay, so it actually wraps threads around the edge of your fabric. What season am I up to on New Girl? Okay, so what just happened? So Nick and Jess are broken up now. I think it might be season three. Not a fan of them breaking up. You know what I like in sitcoms? I like it when you have two characters that you know are gonna get together like Pam and Jim, Amy and Jake Peralta, and they stay together. <laughs> like they don't feel like they have to do, the writers don't have to do. They're like, oh, and then they break up and it's so sad because they're really soulmates and like, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like New Girl does a lot of that with like Schmidt and Cece and um, Jess and Nick. So they're currently broken up and they I just watched the episode where Nick pretends to be gay because Jess wanted to bring a guy home and guys were like freaking out that she lives with her ex. So that's where I am. You agree, Evie? Yeah, it's like a little it's just a little annoying because, you know, they're going to get back together in the end. Um, yeah, so. I hate that show so much. My ex-boyfriend loved it. I'm not saying that's why we broke up. <laughs> I really like it. I I feel like the first season was actually the funniest, which is kind of unusual for a sitcom. I feel like normally they take a little while to gain traction and like two and three tend to be good seasons for most sitcoms. But for whatever reason, New Girl, like the first season like knocks it out of the park, I think is so funny. And then it's kind of like, it's not like laugh out loud funny in seasons two and three. Is the stay home and sew discount for, for PDF patterns over? No, it's not. We've actually left that code up and just haven't really been talking about it much. So you can still use it. It does not work on the new patterns. It applies to patterns that have been out before this current pre-order. So yeah, you can use that stay home and sew on your PDF patterns. You like the final season the most? I actually haven't seen the final season. What other sitcoms do you guys like? The Time in Between? No, I haven't seen that. I know you guys recommended um, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, so I might start that next. But I'm a sitcom person. Like, I like my TV to be cute and funny. So I really like all of those. Um, who's the guy who did, I can't remember his name. The Good Place and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Did he do Parks and Rec too? Like I like that whole, those worlds. Community, I like Community a lot too. I haven't watched that in a while and it's on um, Netflix now. Very on Hulu, HBO is so funny. Dark humor, Call, Call the Midwife. Always Sunny in Philadelphia, The Office, Parks and Rec. Mike, sure. Thank you. <laughs> um, which of my books or patterns do I recommend for a beginner? So this is also a super common question. And I always like to steer you guys towards my book, Gertie Sews Jiffy Dresses. That is geared towards beginners. So you'll find that easy to use. And then also, if you're looking for a tutorial to use, I have a gathered skirt video on YouTube, which is very popular. Not to brag but it has over a million views. 
Uh, it's very popular. It was made by Good Housekeeping TV. And I also just put up a tutorial for the Stanwick skirt on YouTube, which is um, great for beginners too. So I would check that out. It's the felt circle skirt tutorial. So the charm patterns, Stanwick skirt, Hepburn top, and Rita blouse are all um, going to be great for beginners. Katie, you started with the gathered skirt tutorial. Yeah, it was really popular. Um, Marvelous, is Ma Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, so good. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm not a Friends fan. I tried to rewatch that recently and I was like, mm -mm, I don't know why I didn't like it. Um, how come my super chat isn't turned on? I could be getting tips for my time and advice. Yeah, I watched a video about super chat and it just really weird to me. <laughs> do you guys think I should do that? Would you be like turned off if I were like, send me money to comment? I don't know, it just seemed really weird. It was like you could pay to like make a comment. I don't know, we could try it. Um, friends didn't age very well. Yeah, we can try a super chat. I don't know. I kind of feel like if you guys want to support me, like the Patreon is the best way to do it. Um, but I'll think about the super chat thing. Yeah, it's it's just the thing where you can like you can monetize live videos by having people like pretty much tip you in the chat. Um Do it. <laughs> Don't use super chat. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'll think I'll definitely think about it. But yeah, if you guys are looking for ways to send me money because you just feel like you want me to have more of your money, do the Patreon. We worked so hard on it and we give you monthly content and regular exclusive live streams and all sorts of events on Patreon. And I really feel like it's the best way for people to support us, to support my YouTube, especially. I've been able to do so much more with YouTube since we started the Patreon. So yeah, please, if you're not on Patreon and you're just feeling like you have some extra money that you want to throw our way for doing what we do, then yeah, I would highly recommend the Patreon because it supports us and you guys get so much out of it too. I really feel like it's great value. Um, I really believe strongly in what we're doing there. So thank you guys. You spend so much on Patreon. <laughs> thank you for all your compliments about Patreon. That really like means a lot to me. It's like, it's been super satisfying to work on. And um, I just feel like we're just doing some of the best work we've done on Patreon and it's just making us so much better because we're like constantly releasing and like working those creative muscles and it's just been really, really good. So thank you guys. We've knocked it out of the park. Thank you guys, don't make me cry. <laughs> Alicia texted me yesterday. She was like, you look like you were gonna cry at the end of the live stream. I get really emotional when you guys talk about how much you like Patreon because it was like, when I hired Malisha, we, one of the first things we talked about was doing some sort of subscription service. And it was kind of this big overwhelming thing for a year and we didn't really make it happen. And then a, after a year, we just did it. Like, we're like, let's use Patreon. It's good. Cause we were looking at doing it on the charm patterns site and like figuring out a way to set up a subscription platform there. And then I got super inspired by people like Christine McConnell and the way she's using Patreon. And I was like, let's just do this. And we just like dove in to Patreon and it's been so much work, but so satisfying. It's one of the most satisfying things that I have worked on in my whole career. Don't make me cry. Stop it. So I just, I get very emotional when we talk about Patreon because it has been so, so satisfying for us. So thank you all. Thank you all. Um, yeah, <laughs> me and Christine, we've got you. I'm reading all your comments. That's why I'm being quiet. You love the Patreon. I think the Rita sleeves might be my favorite expansion, but I do really love the Rita. Don't make us cry. <laughs> 
Jenny, yeah, so Jenny says, I feel like Patreon has let you keep creatively connected with the retro sewing community instead of the time bill between pattern releases. I love it. Yeah, it's, I agree. I feel it's totally changed the timeline of what we do. Um, before it was like, and we're still doing the big charm patterns releases, but before it was just like maybe four big releases a year. And in between that, there was not as much sort of like give and take with the whole community and keeping in touch with you guys. And we weren't able to do as much. And now that we're focusing on these like monthly projects that are sometimes expansions, sometimes embellishments, sometimes they are standalone patterns that are a little bit smaller. It's just really changed the way that we work. Well, in addition, we're still working on the big charm pattern. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. So yeah, it's just been a really positive thing for us. And um, <laughs> I'm Jenny, you're funny. You would release a pattern the next week where what's all oh, what's next? <laughs> yeah, it's kept us like doing stuff more regularly and um, doing smaller projects. It's just been really, really good. And I just believe in it 100% because I know there's a lot, there can be people who sort of, our naysayers, <laughs> the naysayers about things like subscription services and Patreon and all that, because as a culture, as a society, we might be a little burnt out on subscriptions because we all like feel like we need to have so many like Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, like there's just so many people taking your money on a monthly basis. And it just gets a little like, no, I'm not going to do <laughs> like, and then you're kind of like looking over your expenses. So I, I felt like I I was sort of like hitting that wall when I introduced the idea to people. And there were some people who were super turned off by us starting a subscription service. And the best way I've been able to explain it to people is why it works is that even if you can't sign up for the Patreon, even if it's not in your budget, if you're you're against subscriptions as on principle you still get more content from us than you were getting before because the Patreon is paying for us to make these monthly YouTube shows. It's gotten us more involved doing things like live feeds and stuff like that. So even if you never sign up for the Patreon, you're getting so much more content than you were before because of the Patreon. So like even for people who can't sign up for it, it's a win-win. Like it's the only way I can describe it is like, that money is funding our YouTube content as well. So it's just, I mean, I just, I can't say enough good things about it. And it's really sustaining us now during this unusual time. I love how people keep saying that during this unusual time. So yeah, I can't say enough good things about what it's done for us and um, how it's helped us connect with you. And, and honestly, I just feel really strongly that it's a good value for, for you guys too. So this is not a pitch. This is just me talking. <laughs> this is just me talking about things that are important to me. So um, if you sign up for it, if you don't sign up for it, it's still helping us get you more content. So yeah. Oh, you guys are asking about Christine McConnell. Yeah, you're gonna have a lot of people here who are some crossover between me and Christine, which I really love because I'm a huge fan of Christine McConnell. And um, yeah, her Patreon's a little different. I mean, she does, to her aesthetic is totally different from mine, I think. And she does more like bake, she comes from a baking background, but she also does some sewing and stuff like that. Um, she is more of like a throw things together and kind of figure it out as you go sewer, I would say. And she's released some patterns through her Patreon. Like she did an apron, but it's like only in one size. And like, she just doesn't have like the, the charm patterns background that we have, but she has this sort of amazing aesthetic and her videos are super high quality and her baking is amazing. Like it's just a different, it's, it's different. I wouldn't say hers is a sewing Patreon. It's more like crafting, baking, DIY, some sewing embroidery with a super glam goth aesthetic. 
Is that the best way to describe it? Yes, yeah, she does woodworking. She does um, furniture renovation. She will make like, she made a gingerbread replica of the Winchester Mystery House. <laughs> like she, yeah, she does. She's amazing. So yeah, check her out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading your comments. If I ever just go silent and you're like, is she still there? It's because I'm looking at your comments. That's why. Oh, you want to talk real, real talk though. What is your lipstick shade? Guys, can we talk about my makeup for a little bit? Because, um, this is the first time I've used this lipstick, which is Sugar Pill, the liquid matte lipstick in the color Nurse. And I like it a lot. I like the um, applicator a lot too. So you guys know I ordered some things from Sugar Pill a couple weeks ago, this like aqua eyeshadow. And I really like this. I think it's gonna be, um, I think it's gonna be, become a staple for me. So, and then can we talk about my eyeshadow? This is Dose of Colors. I'm like, I need to see it while I talk about it. This is Dose of Colors. They sell these little duos. They're called, they're called Ideal Duos. But I is spelled like I, get it? Ideal. And they have the top kind of flips up and they're all sort of shimmery metallic eyeshadows. So the top is like a creamy consistency metallic and then you screw it off and in the bottom there's the same shade in like a glitter powder. So I just like went, this is the color maple and I went like just for the sort of monochromatic look today and you put on the sort of creamy, side first and then you can kind of like put some of the the powder on top of it so yes I like it and it comes in a bunch of different colors I just have this one right now though bye Evie good to see you pre and break <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea if it stays fairly well because I just put it on for the first time today but I like how it feels. It's not too dry and it's not transferring off on my finger. So I'll update you tomorrow. How about that? Oh, these earrings are by Micheline Pitt for Vixen by Micheline Pitt. Jenny says, I snapped the handle off my hairbrush yesterday. What was the hairbrush and combs you use? I really like my Mason Pearson brush, um, those really expensive brushes. I have the Popular in pink. I've had it for like 12 years now. It's held up really great. Um, but I know people have recommended other brushes that are as good, people feel they're as good as Mason Pearson without all the money. And the combs I used are called Grip Tooth. So for the side comb style. Um, but tooth is spelled T U T H and I got them from Vermont country store. I didn't watch the, his vintage touch tutorial last night, but I will have to check that out. All right, everyone. Oh, Adrian just got here and I was about to say goodbye. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adrian. Um, anything creamy should have an eyeshadow primer. It'll stay longer. Okay. I do have that, um, Urban Decay eyeshadow primer. Oh, thanks, Gummy128. She says, hi, Gertie. I just got my first sewing machine a few days ago, and your videos have helped me so much. Thank you. All the tabs I have opened are Gertie recommendations. <laughs> Missy, you just got here. 
Sorry, guys. Yeah, Jenny, if you ever feel like you have a little extra money, the Mason Pearson ones, like it'll last you a lifetime. So there's that. All right, everyone. So I see that my files are updating right now. I have to go upload the files to Patreon so that they're ready to release to you tomorrow morning. So guys, tomorrow we're gonna come back and do a live and we're just gonna talk about this new Patreon project. <laughs> I'm so excited to show you these photos. They are like, they're so dreamy. And Sophie from Shameless just did this amazing job editing the photos that I took here at home in quarantine. And I just, I'm so excited to show you them and the project you guys are going to flip out about. So stay tuned for tomorrow morning. Thank you guys. Um, we'll talk tomorrow. All right. So have a good night. I got to go do my knitting too, obviously. These stripes aren't going to knit themselves. So I will, um, I'll talk to you guys next time. All right. Have a great night, great morning, day, whatever it may be, wherever you are. Goodbye.